Welcome back everybody to another week of data visualization in Python. So today we're going to focus on the data table in Dash. This is what we're going to create today. We're going to focus on how to create drop downs inside columns and rows of the data table and the values in each drop down. So here we have drop downs and all of these are drop downs as well of different cities. This you can find right here in this link below the video in the description. Open all the links and download the code as well. Uh, Dropdown has, uh, sorry, the data table has different chapters. Today we're going to focus on this chapter, Dropdown Inside Data Table. Uh, if you're new to this or excited about the dropdown and the data table in general, just don't forget to subscribe below because each week we're going to do a different chapter within the Dash data table. Uh, but this week is going to be the drop down, which is all in here. And open this link as well with the references, because this has all the parameters that uh, some of which we're going to go over in order to create the, the drop down, specifically uh, these down here the drop down parameter, the conditional, and so on and so on. Okay, so how do we create this these drop downs inside the dash data table? We are going to do that by importing these libraries. Um, we're going to use dash version 1.9.1. You can use any version above 1.8. If you don't have it, just do pip install dash and you'll be up and running within two minutes. Uh, import the rest of these libraries as well. And then we're going to do all of this code. Um, the, the, the three things we're going to focus on in this dropdown is the main three things you can do with dropdowns. You're going to learn how to create a dropdown per column. So choose which column you want to put all the drop downs. You're going to learn how to create drop downs per row. So you can choose which row you want to put the drop downs from first to as many rows as you want. And you're going to learn how to, how to do a conditional drop down. So you can choose where you want to put the drop down exactly, which cell in which row and in which column. All right. So let's start with the first one. The first one is per column. So um, I, we're going to look at this first. Uh, data set all the way down here okay um, the first thing you want to do is obviously we're going to create our own uh, data set uh, data frame uh, with with these um, columns and and data uh, this is just an example from the web page you can instead of creating one you can just install one from or import uh, from a CSV CSV sheet or from an Excel sheet into your own uh, pandas data frame we're going to, here we're going to start the layout, the dash table dot data table, and we're going to give it an ID. We're going to import all the data records into uh, the data parameter. And here we're going to give the columns their parameter. We're going to give the climate ID, uh, sorry, the column ID, and we're going to give uh, uh, the column name. In this case, we have three columns, climate, uh, temperature, and city, as you can see here. And we're going to give them a presentation dropdown. For those columns where we're going to have dropdowns, uh, we got to make sure that the, the dictionary has a, a key called presentation and a value called dropdown. Temperature will not have a dropdown, and that's why you see no dropdowns here. But if you want a dropdown, make sure that you put presentation dropdown as well. Okay, we're going to put editable true, meaning that we can edit the, the data table and change the values there. All right. So we are going to focus on this parameter, the drop down, from here all the way to here. You see, this is one dictionary. And this will allow us to create a drop down per column. You choose the column. So how do we do this? This is a dictionary of keys that represent column IDs. So this dictionary, in this case, has two keys, climate key, which is one column, and the city key, which is another column. You can have as many keys as you want. I just want to put in two columns those drop downs, so I put climate and city. And those keys have values um, that are either options and clearable. Clearable just tells you that you can clear the data, uh, true or false, meaning here this is true. You see I can clear it with an X, and this is false. I cannot clear the data. I can only choose a different drop down, but I cannot clear it. But the options is the value of that key. And the options is the most important thing because this will choose, this tells you what data you want inside those uh, drop down cells. So in this case, um, I'm going to say that for I in uh, the climate column, the unique uh, values in the climate column, 
those are the ones that I want in the side of this drop downs. There's only three unique uh, climates, if I recall. There's sunny, snowy, and rainy. So there's only going to be these three unique values in this drop down. Okay? This is one way of writing it. Another way of writing the drop down options are instead of a for loop, just same thing. It's a list of dictionaries. So this is a bit longer way of write, writing it. You just say each dictionary is uh, a drop-down option. And this option is going to have NYC as the label and the value. It's going to be Miami and it's going to be Montreal. So also here there's three options in this uh, under the city column, which you can see here. Miami, New York City, or Montreal. Only three options for each drop-down. Okay, so this is how you do the drop down per column. You use a drop down parameter and you close it and you finish and and you have and you have all the, the drop downs. Important to remember that you cannot decide which row you put the drop downs. It's in all of the rows under this column or all of the rows under this column. It's not one or two or half, it's all of the rows. Now, if you want to decide how to do, if you only want it on the first row or the sec, first and second row, then you use the second option. So let's hashtag this out so we don't have it in our code and hashtag this in so we look at the second option. Okay, so here's the second option data table with per row drop downs important to remember this is from first row to as many as you want so you have to start from the first row okay so we're doing the same thing here again we're just import, um, building a data frame giving it given the, uh, the data into the data parameter choosing the, the columns giving it an ID and the name we're going to say the same thing there's a drop down and presentation uh, column that we're going to put and uh, it, drop down in climate column and there's going to be a drop down in the city column so we're not going to have one under temperature and now we have to use here we have to use the drop down data parameter which is right here let's go with drop down drop down data parameter okay so you can read all about it here but i put it in uh, in in a different way that it was easier for me to understand so what this means is we are creating here a list of dictionaries, one dictionary per row. So here we only have one dictionary. You see there's one list. Let's, let's make this smaller so you can see everything. There's one list here. This is the list. Okay, all the way from here to here. And in this case, only one dictionary from here all the way to here. One dictionary. So it meaning it's going to be, it's going to represent the first row. Each dictionary is one row. This one is the first dictionary, so it's the first row. And this dictionary has keys that represent the column IDs. So I'm going to say in the first row, in under the climate column and under the city column, I'm going to put um, I'm going to put drop downs only in the first row of the of those columns. Um, again, here you're going to have their values of those keys. It's going to be options and clearable. That's to you don't need clearable if you don't want it. You can take this out. I chose to do it to put it in there, but the options is the most important one. This one represents the cell data. So this one represents the the data that's going to go in that drop down in that cell. Okay. So much like above, we're going to say that the unique values of climate is going to go under this uh, cell drop down. And in the city, we're going to have the unique values inside city. What are the unique values inside city? We have Montreal, Miami, and New York City. So this drop-down is going to have three options, and it's going to be under the city column. But remember, in the first row, because there is one dictionary, and this is the first dictionary, it's the first row. So I'll save this and execute it. Perfect. And see what it gives us. Okay, so you see that we only have drop downs in the first row here and here because we only chose it under the city column and the climate column. And we have those unique values that we chose to put in within those that drop down cell. Okay, but there's nothing in the second row. If you want the second row also to have a drop down, you'll do this. You can either copy paste all of this or and do it again or just do a for loop. So in this for loop uh, for x in range two, 
we are going to create um, uh, another dictionary, so two dictionaries, this one and then the second one, which is an exact copy, uh, because this is what range means. Range is just like saying 0 and 1. So we're going to have two different dictionaries, uh, uh, copies of each other. So this will pretty much repeat itself in the second row as well. Let's take a look. So now you see that we have call, uh, we have drop downs in the first row and in the second row, right? With the same kind of values because we just repeated it. So this option, the second option of drop down data, this parameter allows you to create row by row drop downs if you don't want drop downs in all the rows under a certain column. All right. Third option is the conditional option that we're going to look at right now. With this. So let's hashtag this out so this doesn't bother us. and hashtag this in, and this is conditional. Okay, so here, same thing, we're importing, this is different data, we're just gonna import different data with these columns, city, neighborhood, and temperature. Do the same thing here we did above, um, call in the data and the columns, and now we're gonna use the parameter dropdown conditional. In this parameter, it's a list of dictionaries. So you see, uh, here's a list, and we're gonna have one dictionary and then the second dictionary column and then the sec comma sorry and then the second dictionary all the way here okay so in this case we're going to have two dictionaries each dictionary represents a conditional slash if uh, statement and its keys are either clearable if or options so you see I have the key if I have the key options and I have the key clearable. So let's start with the if. So this is our first dictionary. And in this dictionary, we're gonna say, we're gonna write this, which is inside the website as well, the dash uh, table references. And this is the best way of, of actually, this is the best way I understood it. What this is telling us is, if under city column, a row equals NYC, then the data, under that same row, under neighborhood column, will be this. So let's take a look here. Let's make this smaller. So let's read this again. You see how we have here under Brooklyn this uh, drop down? Why do we have it here? Because we're saying if under the city column, and um, this is the city column, a row equals NYC, in this case, this row equals NYC, then the data under the same row, this here same row, under the neighborhood column, because we put here neighborhood, will be, what is it going to be? And then we'll look into the options key, and this is the data that's going to be there. And we're going to have a, a loop, a list of Brooklyn, Queens, and Staten Island. That's gonna go into this dictionary under the options. So these are the three options that we're gonna have under the dropdown. Brooklyn, Queens, and Staten Island. Brooklyn, Queens, and Staten Island. So there you have it. We created these three options under the neighborhood uh, column that's conditional to or depends on the value under the city column within NYC because we chose here NYC. Let's look into the second dictionary and the second if statement. Here we're saying under the city column, if a value equals Los Angeles, so we have Los Angeles here, if a value equals Los Angeles, under the neighborhood column, the options in that, in that same row is going to be Venice, Hollywood, or Los Feliz. So the options in the same row of Los Angeles is going to be a drop down of Venice, Hollywood, Los Feliz, because that's the values we chose as an option. Okay? So that's how you did a conditional. And those are the three different types of, of ways you can create drop downs within a dash data table, either per column or per row, starting from the first row. You can't start from the second or third. You have to start from the first row or conditional. So you can pretty much choose where you want to put the drop down. It's usually if you want to create one drop down here or one drop down there, not too many drop downs, but it's wherever you want to put it.
And that's how you come up with this. If you have any questions about how to create this, how to do this, please write me in the video below. If you like this video, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe below so you can enjoy uh, every week a new uh, video and a new tutorial about a different chapter of the Dash data table and different ways of creating uh, plotly graphs and uh, interactive graphs um, all in Python, um, which is a great way to learn how to do data visualizations and how to read data visualizations. Tip of the week. Um, so this week what I'd like to share with you is um, different ways or a list of data sets that I'm going to add to the video below. Uh, these are uh, websites where you can find awesome data sets. So Kaggle is one of them. I uh, just go into uh, the data sets um, link and you just look into any data you want. Just type the name here and you'll get back a gazillion different data sets. Data.world is another website which you have great data sets in there. Just go into the uh, resources and look for uh, different data sets. Um, and then Open Data Network is a great website where you can find, it's a website built to sharing data sets and reliable data sets. So you can type here anything you want, maybe coronavirus, and you should find uh, very cool data sets that are shared by, by many people and APIs. So these data sets are always, are continuously being uh, updated. So I'm going to add these and a few others to the list below so you can look at different websites for different data sets. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got value um, from it. Uh, we're going to, again, we're going to go over these different chapters in the weeks to come. So um, please uh, subscribe below, uh, stick to this channel, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much.